Well, welcome back, folks. I'm Joe, and you're watching Safari Joe's Adventures. Now, what tool does almost everybody have around their house that is very versatile and you can do a lot of things with? I'm not going to give you any hints. Go ahead. Guess. Do you give up? Yes, it's the ordinary five-gallon plastic bucket. You can tell that I've had these for a while. I'll accept the Menards bucket. I just got it a couple months ago. You can get these five-gallon buckets clean and new at just about any hardware store. Or if you're done painting your house, you have a friend that's a painter, it's really easy to clean the paint out of these things and you have yourself a great bucket for use in uh, multiple things. Over the next few videos, I'm going to be building some DIY projects using the five-gallon bucket. These are projects that are easy to do. They're very inexpensive. Some of y'all will like these and end up building some yourself. I'm actually loading up the back of my truck today, taking some stuff up to northern Michigan. I'll be heading up there in a couple of days to work on my cabin. I need a couple of little mouse traps, so I'm going to show you a couple of different designs of mouse traps. And just as a disclaimer, these are not my ideas. I've seen these done on YouTube. I've got friends that use both types of these mouse traps that I'm building. They're very good and they're great at catching mice. So I'll show you how to build these things and you might want to do it yourself if you have issues with mice anywhere. You know, up at my cabin, I keep finding mice in there. It's set for many years, so they pretty much made their own homes in there. I've got rid of most all of them, but there's still ways for them to get in there. So I need to figure out something I can put in there that will take care of the mice problem. Now what you're going to need to build this first mouse trap is pretty minimal. You're going to need an aluminum can. This is a soda can. In fact, it's not just a soda can, it's Verner's, the best ginger ale on the market. A lot of people will use beer cans, soda cans. The next thing you'll need is some type of a rod. This just happens to be a piece of steel that came out of my junk pile. It's nice and straight, round. That'll give the can something to ride on. You'll need the five gallon bucket and a couple of drywall screws or any type of screw will work. You'll need a roll of electrical tape and a couple of small hose clamps. Let's not forget the stick. You need some type of either a 2x4 or a 2x2. This is just a piece of aspen I made a walking stick out of quite a few years ago out elk hunting and this will be used as a ramp. The idea is to drill a hole through the center of the can so it sits on this shaft and will turn. You can drill this hole, but there's really no good way to drill a hole through the center here because if you do, it's going to be about half in this hole that's actually put in there to drink this soda. So I did something a little bit different. Didn't get it all on film. I'll just show you what I did. This here's the can I drilled out last night. So this shaft goes through. And what I did, I know, the back side of this looks like the bottom side of this. And the reason that does is because I took another can and I took a pair of snips, went all the way around this, and then I ground this down on my bench grinder here. So just the bottom of this was in here and it fits right over that lip on the top. So I took and put some JB Weld around this, set that on, and then used a couple of clamps to clamp that. And this morning, it's good. It just looks like you have a can with two bottoms. Now it's absolutely perfect. Okay, what I've done just makes it easy is right above the handle. I drilled a hole through this bucket right between these two lines, this rim. And I did the same on the opposite side. And then I just cut this section out. I'm not sure if it's deep enough. We'll find out in just a minute because I'm going to measure it with the stick that I'm putting in there. If it's not, I'll cut it a little bit more. So I took this old painted bucket, drilled the holes out, cut out my ramp, and I have my can. This will go right through the center rolls perfectly. Now this will be used as a ramp for those nasty little critters to get off the ground and up onto the top of the trap when it's done. Now that you got the can on the shaft, kind of get it centered 
take yourself a marker go about an inch out on either side it doesn't matter you just don't want it too tight you want the can to be able to move without binding make a couple of marks just put a little hose clamp in there put your can back on and put another hose clamp back on there and line it up you can see looking down in the top of the bucket i've got a loose hose clamp on both sides what i'm going to do is on each one of these marks i'm going to tighten down the hose clamp All this is going to do is keep this can in the middle. I'm going to make me a little mark here. And then just slide this out a little bit and run some electrical tape on it. All this electrical tape is going to do is keep that from pulling through the bucket. And again, you do want a little bit of movement on here and on here. You just don't want anything to end up binding at some point in time. So we'll find that sweet spot there. It doesn't take a whole lot, just enough to keep it from pulling through. Okay. Moves freely, moves freely. We're good to go. Now I've got to measure this piece of wood and cut it down for a ramp. Those mice are pretty good climbers, but they can't climb up smooth plastic, but they can climb up wood real easily. Now I cut an angle at each end of this on the opposite side. You don't have to over engineer these things. Mice are really not that smart. Just an old bad habit of mine, so I did it. I like to leave it just a hair above the can. Not a whole lot. They got a nice little flat platform. They can reach out and stretch, get over there by the food, jump up on there and uh, go for the old log roll. Now I'm just looking for placement of the screws. So I'm gonna put myself a mark on the bottom here. Just spread them apart just a little bit. I've got them in there. That way this doesn't accidentally slip off. Here we have a finished product. This is mousetrap number one. You can see I've got a ramp, got a little flat spot that I cut in there. They got just a little bit of a stretch. What you do is you can put some type of a cheese spread or peanut butter I can tell you straight up, I think mice like peanut butter better than cheese spread. You kind of smear peanut butter on this thing all the way around. Unless you want to take your mice outside and set them back out there so they can come back in, it's always a good idea to put some kind of liquid. I do know that in some northern climates where it freezes, you can add some antifreeze to the water so it doesn't freeze. They'll fall down in there, they'll swim around a little bit, and then they'll drown. Then all you got to do is go dump them out and start over again. Now mousetrap number two isn't any harder to build. It's just a little different. We're going to need another five gallon bucket. We're going to use two of these 8D duplex nails. These are going to be hinge pins. And then just a couple of small, I don't know what size these are. I think they're number eights, Phillips head screw with a little nut on them. And the last thing is this. It looks like cardboard, but it's made out of plastic. I'm going to build a trap door out of this. This trap door will be on hinges so that when it's overweighted on one side, it will swing down and drop the mouse into the bucket. Now, believe it or not, you can go on Amazon and buy something similar to this. It's about nine to $10 for one. Uh, you can get a couple of them for a little bit more, but I'm thinking, you know, I could probably build this myself out of things I have here for pretty much free. I've got probably 25 or 30 of these pieces of plastic cardboard that was here at this house when I bought it 14 years ago. I use them for a bunch of different things and I got to look at that and thinking about it and I thought, you know, I could build one of these. It probably worked just as good. So I'm gonna see if I can make that happen. Now the inside diameter of this bucket looks like it's about 11 and 3 8 So what I want to do is cut a circle about 11 inches. That way it's got a little bit of room around the interior to swing open. The best way to do this is if you have a compass, you could uh, set it five and a half inches because five and a half twice is 11. That's what we need is 11 inches. Put the compass in the middle and draw 
an 11 inch circle and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. I don't have a compass and I do have one of these. It's for cutting out lights, cam lights in the ceilings of drywall. So I've got measurements on this. So I'm gonna set it and then I can cut myself an 11 inch circle. I've got this set 11 inches. Well, five and a half. So we're going to go ahead and get this about the middle of the board and then just make ourselves a mark. Okay, you can see the mark I've got around that. I'll get myself a pair of scissors and we'll get her cut out. All I have out in my shop is some tin snips, so we're going to give it a shot. We've got the trap door cut out and ready to install. As far as hole placement, I like to do what I did on the other bucket. These handles are centered on the bucket. Instead of having to measure and try, try to find true center, just come straight up from where these handles hook into the bucket. And again, we want to be just above this second ring right here. The drill bit you want to use should be the next size bigger than the diameter of your nail. Drill a hole there, turn it around. Now what you want to do on this, you see the center hole, follow that across, find the hole that corresponds with it in the cardboard. We're looking about right here. Same thing right about here. Okay, it looks like we're good. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now in order to make this work, the mouse has to be able to walk out on this and be stable. What we're going to do is drill two more holes. What you want to do first is determine which side you're going to set the ramp on. I think I'm going to put the ramp on this side. When the mouse comes on and walks across, I want it to be able to dump the mouse in, but not flip over. In order to prevent that, I'm going to take and drill a hole right underneath this to stop it from going down on this side. So I'll take my drill bit and I'll put it right under this line, right in the center and drill a hole. And we will insert one of these screws. Now this side is solid so the mouse can come on here, come across when he crosses the center line, he goes down. But again, we don't want this flipping over like that. So we're gonna have to add another screw to it to keep that from flipping over. What we're gonna do is on top over here, put another screw so it doesn't go past the center line this way. So it'll come back on its own. So here we go. This is a stopper pin and there's another stopper pin right under here. When that mouse walks across, it'll come back. When it goes up, it won't go any further than that. So it'll fall back down and you're ready for the next mouse. Now all you gotta do is put a little bit of peanut butter right in this area. They can smell it, they walk across, get across that threshold and the trap door of doom opens up and takes them to the bottomless pit. This particular style of trap here, you cannot put your ramp up over the top or it will hit the ramp and it won't work. What you kinda have to do is take a screw and go in from the top and screw it into your ramp. So there you have it. Those are the two traps that I just built. These are mouse catching machines. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative, that you learned something, and maybe if you need some uh, magnum powered mouse traps, this would do it because you just set them once and they're set. Just go out there every so often, put a little peanut butter on it, and leave it alone. Thank you for following along. If you have comments or questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. I always answer them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Check out some of my other videos. If you like them, consider subscribing and share anything with a friend. Every time you share something with somebody, it always helps my channel out a little bit. I appreciate you watching. Thanks and God bless.